rate. All non-council employees, non-council employees, please leave the main floor of the chambers, please. Staff members that are, that are on the floor, please leave the floor at this time. Clear the floor, please. All staff, clear the floor. Thank you. Everyone, please take their seat. May we have quiet in the chambers. Members, please take your seats. Members, please take your seats. Quiet in the chambers. May we have quiet in the chambers. May we have quiet in the chambers and may members please take their seats and may we close the door. Thank you. Quiet in the chambers, please. Quiet in the chambers. All rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please be seated. Roll call. Quiet in the chambers. Adams. Present. Amprey Samuel. Present. Ayala. Present. Barron. Present. Morelli. <coughs> Brannon. Here. Cabrera. Here. Chin. Here. Cohen. Here. Constantinides. Present. Cornegie. Combo. Present. Deutsch. Here. Diaz. Drum. Espinal. Eugene. Gibson. Jonai. Grudenchik. Holden. Kalos. King. Who? Present. Kozlowitz. Here. Lanceman. Here. Lander. Here. Levin. Here. Levine. Here. Mizell. Here. Menchaca. Presente. Miller. Present. Moya. Here. Perkins. In the house. Powers. Here. Reynoso. Here. Richards. Present. Rivera. Present. Rodriguez. Rose. Here. Rosenthal. Here. Salamanca. Present. <clears throat> Torres. Present. Traeger. Here. Ulrich. Malone. Here. Van Bramer. Here. Williams. Jaeger. Here. Matteo. Speaker Johnson. Here. Thank you. All quiet in the chambers, please. All rise for the invocation. The invocation will be delivered by Rabbi Joseph Potasnik, the Rabbi Emeritus of Congregation Mount Sinai at 250 Cadman Plaza West in the borough of Brooklyn. Thank you, Public Advocate Tiss. I was also the chaplain of the federal prison for a number of years. Thankfully, I don't see any familiar faces here uh, from those years. Let me share one story with you, uh, which I think has uh, great meaning. Years ago, it was Senator Bill Bradley who was invited to speak at the Waldorf Astoria 
Before he spoke, the waiter came around with the butter. And Bradley looked at him and said, I'll have an extra pat of butter. And the waiter said to him, sorry, sir, we have a strict rule at the Waldorf, one pat per person. And Bradley looked at him and said, you know who I am? He said, no, sir, who are you? He said, I'm a senator from New Jersey. I was forward with the New York Knicks. I went to Oxford. The guy said, that's very impressive. Do you know who I am? He says, no, who are you? He said, I'm the guy with the butter. <laughs> there is a lesson there for all of us. Whether you are the server or whether you are the senator, in our eyes as people of faith, you are the same person. Whether you are born here or brought here, you are the same person. People who are homeless are not people who should be seen as honorless. And to those brave women who stand up and identify with Me Too, we as men need to stand with, us, with them and say, we too stand with you too. So thus, a house of worship as your city council has windows. The reason for windows is what we say on the inside, we have to see on the outside. It was Martin Luther King who said years ago, our days of life begin to end when we are silent about things that matter. We, as clergy, you as council, we cannot afford to be silent. So we come here today belonging to our different faith traditions, but we also stand with one another belonging to one human family. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Sit for a minute so they can say great things about you. Council Member Stephen Levin for the motion to spread the invocation. Thank you very much, Madam Public Advocate. Um, I want to welcome my friend and rabbi, Rabbi Joseph Potasnik, who's the Rabbi Emeritus at Congregation Mount Sinai in downtown Brooklyn. Um, you know, uh, Rabbi Potasnik, Rabbi Aria Kaplan was once asked, I'm reading this, if there are any jokes in the Talmud. And his response was, yes, but they're all old. Uh, Rabbi Potasnik uh, uh, carries on a, a, a long tradition of uh, infusing humor uh, into the most, um, into the most uh, serious of times, into the most joyous of times. Um, I know there are many times uh, in, in my life in recent years um, that his humor has, uh, has played a very important role in lifting me up in, in times of trial and, uh, and provided me with uh, joyous context in times of celebration. And uh, I know that he has done that for many New Yorkers, whether you know him from 1010 Winds or whether you're a member of his congregation. Uh, he, uh, he has always uh, provided uh, New York with, uh, with a, that light of humor and, uh, and the smile that uh, acknowledges um, all, the, all the great things that are around us. And so, Rabbi Potasnik, I want to thank you very much for being here and for your invocation, and I would like uh, permission to uh, spread the motion, uh, motion to, permission uh, to uh, advance the motion to spread the invocation in full upon the record, Madam Public Advocate. So moved, and thank, thank you, you Rabbi much. Potasnik. Thank you so much. God bless you. Adoption of minutes. None. Messages and papers from the mayor. None. Communication from city, county, and borough offices. None. Petitions and communications. None. Land use call-ups. None. And now, quiet in the chambers, as we now hear, at the first stated, the Speaker of the City Council, Speaker Corey Johnson. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. As we begin this new legislative session, I want to just say that I am very excited to work with every single one of you in serving uh, the people of the City of New York. Uh, this Monday, we will celebrate the life and career of a man who defined the Civil Rights Movement, uh, Martin Luther King, Jr., devoted every moment of his life to ensure that all men and women are treated equally. We continue to be inspired by Dr. King's work and will continue to fight for social justice in his honor. I want to mention that earlier this week I was at the funeral services for Erica Garner. I was joined by my colleague here, Debbie Rose, and by my colleague, Donovan Richards and uh, the public advocate was there as well, as well as the controller and the borough president. The Garner family has gone through so much, and Erica Garner was an activist for social justice in New York City, and I wanted to uh, have a moment of silence for the Garner family today. If people could stand for a moment of silence. All rise. Thank you. If you could remain standing, 
I would like to recognize the recent passing of Mary Audrey Gallagher, mother of my dear friend and our dear friend and colleague, Councilmember Daniel Drum. She was a warm, loving woman who brought joy to everyone she met. Like my mom, Audrey was a PFLAG mom. I'm lucky to have known her. One of the last, I think, conversations that Danny had with his mom was about uh, his new position in the council and the fact that I looked like I was gonna be elected speaker. And it was actually, I think, one of the last lucid moments that she had um, with Danny. She was so proud of you. I remember being at the Queens Museum for your LGBT Pride event this past June, seated next to her. And you know that she loved you with all of her heart. And I want to take a moment of silence for Danny and his family. Thank you. And then lastly, if we could remain standing, there have been numerous tragic fires throughout the city uh, in the last few weeks. I know that Councilmember Levine was on the scene the other night in his district responding to constituents for I think a six alarm fire in his district. And there have been other members who had to deal similarly with uh, tragic fire incidents. I know Councilmember Torres had many fatalities in his district, the deadliest fire since Happy Land. And I wanna give a moment of silence to all the victims and families and folks who have been um, affected by these fires. And I wanna thank the men and women of the FDNY for their tremendous service. So if we could have a moment of silence as well. Thank you all very much. Please be seated. <clears throat> I want to recognize uh, that we are joined by uh, our colleague, Councilmember Cabrera's uh, wonderful wife and his beautiful grandchildren, uh, one of whom it's their first time inside of City Hall. So I want to welcome them and congratulate you and thank you uh, for being here today. I also want to say that uh, during the charter meeting, oh, I think it was, it was a week ago, during the charter meeting a week ago, uh, when I read everyone's name and said that I wanted to work with each and every one of you, when I read Karen Coswitz's name, I looked up and I said, I love you, Karen. And when I looked back down, I missed Keith Powers' name. And his mom was watching from home and said, boy, the speaker doesn't like you. You're the only one that, that, he, that he didn't mention. So I love you, Karen Coswitz, and I love you, Keith Powers. I look forward to working with you. We're going to do good work together, and I want to uh, right the wrong from that crazy day that I barely remember. So uh, jumping into our docket uh, for the day, over the past week, I've had the honor to meet with each and every one of you, each and every council member. I think I've met with every single one of you to discuss our vision for this council over the next four years. As we spoke, as we have many, many times before the last few months, to say nothing about the last four years of conversations about how to most effectively harness the charter mandated authority and power of this city council to best serve New Yorkers, one thing became abundantly clear. Our members are strong, each and every one of our members are strong, our members are diverse, and our members are talented. New Yorkers should feel proud about that. Whether we grew up in public housing, were raised by a single parent, emigrated from another country, or left college early, our backgrounds reflect the myriad of experiences of 8.2 million people who call New York City home. And though we may come from different walks of life, the common thread that binds us together is our deep commitment to public service and our love for this city. The committees, subcommittees, and task force positions we're voting on today will help us hone in on some of the most pressing issues facing our city today. I want to announce the leadership team, which was not announced as part of the Rules Committee uh, hearing earlier, and this will be voted on at a separate Rules Committee hearing, uh, but I want to announce this. Uh, for our Majority Leader, it is going to be Majority Leader Lori Cumbo. Uh, for our Majority... For our Majority Whip, it is going to be Council Member Majority Whip Fernando Cabrera. Uh, 
the chair of the Democratic Conference, which is a new position, and we'll talk more about what it means. It's going to be Council Member Robert Cornegie. Uh, we created a, a new position that's going to work on the council's digital strategy and communication and amplifying the council's voice, engaging people civically when it comes to social media and new media. And so Rafael Espinal is going to be deputy leader for digital communication. I am really proud that Council Member Brad Lander, who was Deputy Leader for Policy over the last four years, is going to remain in that position. He is going to chair the Policy Working Group of the New York City Council, which we are going to reinvigorate, give staff resources to, and I'm sure Council Member Lander, myself, and the staff are going to have conversations with members that would like to participate in it. I really want this uh, group to be strengthened. Uh, to work on issues on a very regular basis. Councilmember Lander has taken a leading role in local progress uh, nationally in looking at progressive policies and other forward-thinking issues that the New York City Council should tackle and that New York City should look at. And so, Brad, I really look forward to serving with you in that position as Deputy Leader for Policy. I want to give my uh, condolences uh, to Minority Leader Steve Matteo uh, for uh, having to put up with me over the last week, uh, but he is a dear friend, and I'm really, really proud uh, that his conference decided to re-elect him as minority leader. Uh, in this body, uh, we have collegiality, uh, our friendships cross ideology and cross party lines. We respect each other, even when there are significant differences when it comes to public policy. I feel that way about Steve, I feel that way about Joe, and I feel that way about Eric. I look forward to working with the minority leader and his entire conference on issues that matter to them in this body and issues that affect their district. So congratulations, Steve. Uh, the rest of the leadership team is going to be Councilmember Margaret Chin, Councilmember Chaim Deutsch, Councilmember Vanessa Gibson, Councilmember Karen Kozlowitz, Councilmember Antonio Reynoso, Councilmember Donovan Richards, Councilmember Carlina Rivera, Councilmember Idanis Rodriguez, Councilmember Debbie Rose, Councilmember Mark Traeger, Councilmember Richie Torres, Councilmember Jimmy Van Bramer, and Councilmember Jumani Williams. Congratulations to each and every one of you. I look forward to serving with you and helping to lead this great body. I want to also recognize that Councilmember Menchaca, uh, who uh, has done an incredible job leading participatory budgeting in his own district in having the most number of people throughout the city participate in participatory budgeting in his district. He is going to serve in a new position related to expanding participatory budgeting to more districts in the city, ensuring that members get the staff support and resources that they need, and for him to think more creatively about how we can engage with the Office of Management and Budget, uh, other city agencies that work on these issues, and the body as a whole to increase participatory budgeting and to even engage more New Yorkers as he's done in his district. Maybe he can teach each one of us lessons who do PB in our own district. So I want to congratulate him on taking that role as well. Uh, I, I want to I uh, say that I'm inspired and thrilled to work with all of my colleagues in their new roles, and I look forward to our continued work together to make New York City stronger and more effective for all, and now I'm gonna go off script. So the off script is that, is everyone 100% happy? No. Are some people happier than others? Yes. I did my best. I, over the last week, I, Ramon and I were here Ramon and I were here all weekend. We met with every single member over the course of uh, about 72 hours. We had crazy documents and spreadsheets and matrices of how to try to ensure that even if people didn't get the top thing or the second thing or the third thing, that they got something that they would be happy with. And uh, I, I say this, I'm not just saying it, I'm saying it. there was no level of vindictiveness towards any member of this body, for me. There was no member of vindictiveness. There was no score settling. There was no keeping track of what happened during the speaker's race. What I said is what I meant a week ago at the charter meeting. 
Whether you supported me or didn't support me, whether you're a new member or a returning member, I have your back. And even if on a piece of paper you didn't get exactly what you wanted, I am going to have the relationship with each and every one of you to be able to deliver on behalf of your districts, whether it's through the budget process, whether it's through helping out on a day-to-day -day basis, whether it's continuing to think creatively about other areas where the council should take a lead or should start to explore issues that matter uh, to individual members into the body. And so this is not even a final document because I want us, each one of us, to continue to have a conversation collectively and with each other about how I can continue to help uh, each member serve their districts, serve the city of New York, and feel good about the work they're doing. Every member has my respect, I have every member's back, and I look forward to facilitating and helping every single member be successful. So for, for people who are disappointed, I'm sorry. Wasn't purposeful, but there will be other ways for us to work together and to be helpful, but I hope that the vast majority of people are happy and feel good because I want to start this council off on a good foot where everyone feels good and where we can get to work and start to have hearings and get into the preliminary budget process and do all of the things that we were elected to do for the neighborhoods across the city. So uh, with that, I end communication from the speaker. Thank you very much. Thank you. <clears throat> Discussion of general orders? Seeing none. Report of special committees? None. On the report of standing committees, the report of the Committee on Rules, Privileges, and Elections, preconsidered resolution one, council rules and committees. Uh, coupled on general orders. Preconsidered M6, committee chairs and membership. Uh, coupled on general orders. On the general order calendar, resolution appointing various persons, commissioner of deeds. Uh, coupled on general orders, and I'd like to ask for a roll call vote on all items coupled on the general order calendar today. Adams. Aye. Ampri Samuel. Aye. Ayala. Aye. Barron. Aye. Borelli. Aye. Brannon. Yes. Cabrera. Yes. Chin. Aye. Cohen. Yes. Constantinidis. Aye. Carnegie. Aye. Combo. Okay. Permission to explain my vote? Yes. Thank you. I rise today to recognize the tremendous opportunity that I've been given to be appointed the majority leader of this body is certainly something that I'm very proud to do to represent this entire body. And I want to thank each and every member here because so much of what I've been able to accomplish is because of you. And because of your support over this last year as a new mom, I was able to come back in 2018 and to serve. And this is such a joyous occasion for me. And I want to thank uh, Speaker Corey Johnson for his leadership, and I look forward to working with him closely in this position. What's so special about this is coming as the former chair of the Women's Issues Committee, as majority leader, this is going to be an incredible time to amplify what we are seeing nationwide in this body. We have an opportunity to take the Time's Up movement, the Me Too movement, and turn it into powerful legislation, as well as to make sure that our budget and financing priorities are in alignment with that. And I look forward to doing just that with this entire body. So as your majority leader, I look forward to continuing to do this great work. I thank Councilmember Jimmy Van Bramer for his incredible service. And when he heard the rumors of potentially that I might become majority leader, he came over to me and wished me well. Um, and gave me that hug of support that he's going to continue to work with me to amplify the voice of the majority leader, but to share his experiences with me. And so I thank everyone for that, and I applaud again Speaker Corey Johnson. He's done a tremendous job at unifying the body, working around the clock in order to make sure that at the end of the day, as he said, that, that good 
is where we're trying to get, and we shouldn't allow great to be the enemy of good, and we should continue to work together. So I thank you as your majority leader and the first African-American woman to ever hold this position, but it's not only a matter of being the first. What really is matters and what's really important is making sure that we do the first as far as budget and legislative priorities that advance women, minority communities, and those that have been disenfranchised. Thank you, and I proudly vote aye. Deutsch. Uh, permission to explain? Yes. So I second what uh, Councilmember Lori Cumbo said, except uh, that I did not have a baby, so I. <laughs> <laughs> Diaz. Diaz. That's yes. Drum. Aye. Espinal. Aye. Eugene. Aye. Gibson. With my warmest congratulations to all of my colleagues, and certainly I want to congratulate our speaker for his creativity and certainly leading a new subcommittee on capital budgets. I'm looking forward to working with all of you, uh, my colleagues, to advance the priorities of our great city. And with that, I congratulate everyone, and I vote aye on all. Jonai. Aye. Gordenchik. Aye. Holden. Aye. Kalos. Aye. King. Aye on all. Ku. Aye. Kozlowitz. Aye. Lanceman. Aye. Lander. Aye. Levin. Aye. Levine. Aye. Mizell. Yes. Menchaca. Permission to explain my vote? Yes. Uh, I vote aye on all, and I'm really happy to welcome uh, my family, parts of my family uh, that are here today. My sister Mary, my sister Erica, my sister Christina. There are seven of us total. Um, and sitting next to me uh, is Kristen Joyner, who one day maybe be on a floor somewhere representing uh, with a lot of truth to power. Um, Kristen is joined by her uh, sister Caitlin and brother Troy. And, uh, and so with that, I want to say thank you uh, not only to Speaker Corey Johnson, but the entire team uh, that has brought forth this incredible team of fearless fighters. As the chair of the Immigration Committee, I'm going to continue to fight not just for immigrants, but for every New Yorker uh, in the future. Thank you. Welcome, Christian. <laughs> Miller. Vote aye. Moya. Aye. Perkins. Aye. Powers. Aye. Reynoso. Richards. Uh, permission to explain my vote? Yes. I uh, want to thank the speaker uh, for the new appointment, but I also wanted to uh, thank the staff that I work with formally as a chair of the zoning committee, and I wanted to acknowledge and, and tell them thank you uh, for the partnership that, that we had. Uh, Raju Mann, Amy Levitin, Dylan Casey, Julie Lubin, Brian Paul, John Douglas, Rosie Perez, James Lloyd, Jeffrey Ewan, Margaret Griffin, Maria Salvavaro, just wanted to say thank you, uh, and I look forward, I'm still going to sit on zoning, look forward to continuing to work with you, but I want to thank you for uh, your partnership uh, over the past uh, two years. Thank you, and I vote aye. Thank you. Rivera. I vote aye. Thank you. Rodriguez. Rose. Aye. Rosenthal. Aye. Salamanca. Permission to explain my vote? Yes. Thank you. I am incredibly proud to have the confidence of the speaker and my colleagues to serve as the land use chair for the session. Our city is at a crossroads, including my community in the South Bronx. This body led by a speaker who understands the importance of having a strong, independent council should be on the, forth, on the front lines on shaping the planning, development, and all other land use actions in a way that listens to and addresses the concerns of all New Yorkers. I believe we can and will do that. After seeing much development in my district and working to approve over 4,000 units of affordable housing in under two years, I believe that I'm ready to work with each and every member of the council to ensure the needs of the constituents are met with any given land use action. With that said, I am ready to roll my sleeves, visit as many neighborhoods as I, I can, and most importantly, listen on how I can help to shape land use for the five boroughs over the next four years. Uh, so let's get to work. I will aye. Thank you. Thank you. Torres. Uh, permission to explain my vote? Yes. I just want to commend the speaker who has been as masterful and as magnanimous as he could be 
in the handling of his first week, and I, I look forward to partnering with you to set a new standard for City Council oversight. Uh, it's going to be exciting. And I have a deep attachment to the Public Housing Committee. Uh, it's been, chairing the Public Housing Committee has been the most fulfilling four years of my life, and I cannot think of a better person in whose hands that committee should be placed than Alika Samuels, who is deeply rooted in public housing, who knows it, who breathes it. So I'm looking forward to serving under your leadership of the Public Housing Committee. So with that, I said aye. I, I. Thank you. Traeger. Uh, permission to explain my vote? Yes. I, I'd like to also just echo the comments of my colleagues and to commend Speaker Corey Johnson, uh, the outstanding staff who literally worked day and night 24-7 to unite the body and successfully worked hard to unite this body, heard every member, heard issues in our communities. So deeply, deeply appreciate uh, the Speaker's leadership. This is a uh, powerful and shining example of a peaceful civil transition of power, and I think he has handled this masterfully, as my colleague Richie Torres said. I also want to just uh, uh, publicly thank, um, uh, you know, Chair Drum, who has significantly raised the bar as Chair of Education Committee, uh, hit on many issues that historically have not been touched upon, and he really has hit a home run in many respects. And uh, there's a lot of work to do to catch up to your leadership, Chair Drum, but uh, I, I will look for you to, to you for guidance and wisdom and, and your support. My condolences again uh, on the passing of your beautiful mother, uh, but you are a friend and a colleague and uh, I'm proud to call you a fellow educator. And it's great that we continue the tradition of having educators run the Education Committee. <laughs> With that, I vote aye on all. Very good. Ulrich. I vote aye. Thank you. Valone. Aye on all. Thank you. Van Bramer. Permission to briefly explain my vote? Yes. Uh, first of all, I want to thank um, uh, Majority Leader Cumbo for those very kind words. I meant what I said uh, when I went to her, when I heard the good news for her, um, and I'm sure she'll do a great job. Uh, but I want to say thank you to the speaker because what has mattered to me most over the last eight years in this body is that, number one, I chair the Cultural Affairs and Libraries Committee the only committee I asked for when I was elected eight years ago. And uh, because of this, I will serve my entire 12 years as the chair of the Cultural Affairs and Libraries Committee, the only committee that I truly, really wanted when I ran for city council. Uh, but in addition, I asked uh, Speaker Johnson uh, to be on leadership and on the budget negotiating team. And I walk away today with all three of the things uh, that I wanted. So I want to thank him uh, for all of that. And with that, I proudly vote aye. Thank you. Williams. Yeager. Aye. Matteo. Aye. Speaker Johnson. Of what I also want to say, I mean, the press knows this already, but members should know this. The reason why Councilmember Williams and Rodriguez are not here today is they were arrested. Uh, I don't know what the exact charges were. I, I don't know exactly what happened. I was there on the scene trying to protect a very well-known immigration activist. Uh, Councilmember Lander was there. Uh, Councilmember Menchaca was there. Who am I forgetting? I think that was all of us. Uh, and uh, there was an incident outside of Federal Plaza coming down Broadway. So uh, Councilmember Williams and Councilmember Lander, uh, Councilmember Williams and Ca Councilmember Lander's here. Councilmember Williams and Councilmember Rodriguez uh, were placed under arrest, and I believe that they are currently under arrest. Uh, I don't know exactly what happened. Um, and I look forward to learning more about what happened today. I'm sure there'll be questions about it at the press conference after this, uh, but I wanted to mention that they did not skip this meeting today. Uh, they are somewhere else. So, um, thank you. And I all, vote aye on all. Thank you. All items on today's general order calendar were adopted by a vote of 48 in the affirmative, zero negative, and zero abstentions. Introduction and reading of bills. None. Discussion of resolutions. There's no resolutions, and now we will begin with general discussion, beginning with Council Member Gibson. Thank you very much, Madam Public Advocate, and I wanted to take a very 
quick opportunity to certainly thank all of the members of this body for the incredible honor and privilege to have served for four years as your chair of the Committee on Public Safety. As the first woman and the first person of color, it's nothing that I've ever forgotten about in terms of the great responsibility that I was given over the past four years. And under the leadership of our former speaker, Melissa Mark Viverito, we set forth on an incredible, ambitious agenda of criminal justice reform, of ensuring that every New Yorker receives equal access to services. And I hope and pray that you all are proud of the work we've done over the four years. And now we are turning the Public Safety Committee over to Council Member Donovan Richards, who I want to congratulate and wish well working with the NYPD and CCRB. And certainly I wanted to recognize the dynamic staff of the Public Safety Committee, led by Deepa Ambakar, our Senior Legislative Counsel, and my counsel, Beth Golub and our legislative aide, Casey Addison, and our financial analyst, Steve Reister and Laura Popper. This team has been by my side for the past four years, and certainly it was not easy, a great deal of challenge, but a great deal of reward. And I am so proud of the work we have done over the last four years. It was not easy to look at a new opportunity. I've built incredible relationships with the NYPD that certainly will uh, not falter, but I look forward to remaining a member of the committee working now under the leadership of our new chair, Councilmember Donovan Richards and I look forward to getting to work. Congratulations, Council Member, and thank you so much. The revised uh, vote for today was a vote in, of 49 in the affirmative, zero negative, and zero abstentions. And now we'll hear from Council Member Lander. Thank you, Madam Public Advocate. I want to first thank the Speaker for the appointment as Deputy Leader for Policy and Chair of the Policy Working Group. That's a space last time where we were able to work on the Fair Work Week legislation for retail and fast food workers, for gig workers, uh, for our neighborhoods, for the environment. There is so much more to do this term, and I look really forward to a productive partnership. Today, even more than that, I want to thank you for joining Ravi Raghvir and the New Sanctuary Coalition. Ravi's a long-standing activist, the founder and leader of the New Sanctuary Coalition, a real leader in immigration reform and protection, and the person who has mobilized people to bear witness at ICE for check-in hearings and detentions. Um, it's 22 years that he has been engaged with ICE, and he's been doing regular check-ins for the last decade. There was no reason to detain him and potentially deport him today other than the leadership that he has taken, the courageous leadership that he has taken on behalf of other immigrants in the city. I was really proud that there were four council members there standing with him today, hundreds of people out there in the street, um, uh, with real respect to council members Williams and Rodriguez for their willingness to face arrest in his support and defense with uh, gratitude to council member Menchaca uh, and the speaker as well. We have a lot of work to do uh, this coming term at the city level. But boy, the relentless work to make sure this city is a sanctuary city, is a welcoming city, is not a place where peaceful and safe uh, and law-abiding leaders uh, risk getting swept up and detained and deported. And uh, I'm proud to be part of a council that stands for that. So thank you, Mr. Speaker. Last speaker is Council Member Levine. Levin, excuse me. Thank you very much, Madam Public Advocate. Um, uh, I didn't say it when I voted, but I do want to thank Speaker Johnson um, and Council staff for um, uh, having the faith in, uh, in the job I've done over the last four years as Chair of the General Welfare Committee. And I want to uh, thank you very much for your vote of confidence in um, assigning me uh, uh, to chair that committee for the next four years. And um, I look forward to working with all of my colleagues to ensure that those New Yorkers most in need, those that are homeless, the children that rely on city services, uh, children that are abused and neglected, um, and, uh, and New Yorkers who rely on, on, uh, on public benefits um, receive all of those services in the way that they, in which they're entitled and in the way in which they deserve with dignity um, and competence. And so thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. I look forward to continuing to work over the next four years to improve the lives of many New Yorkers. Thank you. Thanks, Steve. I I apologize, Mr. Speaker. Uh, Councilmember Espinal. 
Uh, I too didn't get a chance to say a few words when I voted, but I really want to give a big thank you to the speaker for trusting in me to uh, allow me to join the leadership team and uh, be the deputy leader uh, in communications. I think now more than ever, we should be doing everything we can uh, to connect New Yorkers uh, to the work we're doing here in the city council, making them aware of all the important work we're doing now when cities are uh, up to the challenge of, of leading uh, all of the important issues that we can't count on our federal government to do. So I look forward to uh, serving that capacity and also am thrilled to be the chair of the Consumer Affairs Committee uh, again as well and to continue working on behalf of Nightlife. Thank you. Councilmember Grudenchik. Thank you, Madam Public Advocate. Just very briefly, I want to thank uh, the speaker and my colleagues for their vote of confidence in me to chair the Parks Committee. In the summer of 1935, my father, Nathan of blessed memory, was walking across Cretona Park in the Bronx. Oy vey. It's going to take a while, Mr. Speaker. And um, He's and on the clock. I'm on Public the clock. <laughs> and uh, there, was a, there was a parky who asked him, him and his friends if any of them wanted to learn to play tennis. And my father stopped and his friends kept walking. The upshot of the story, Mr. Speaker, is that my father played tennis for 62 years until he couldn't any longer at the age of 79. So I know the transformative effect that New York City parks can have, not only on the life of Nathan Grudenchik and his son Barry, but on the life of every single New Yorker. I am a native New Yorker. I grew up in Pominock Playground. And if there wasn't two people, if there were two people, we played stickball. If there were four or six, it was basketball. And those magical moments when we had 20, it was softball. So I am here today to say thank you to everybody for your vote of confidence, and I look forward to working with everybody to make our great parks that much better. Thank you. Thank you. Councilmember Koslowitz. Thank you. I also want to thank the speaker for having confidence in me, and I look forward to chairing the rules. Elections, I'm trying to find out what the privileges are. <laughs> Best. Oh, <laughs> thank you very much, Ma <laughs> Madam Public Advocate. I refret to reform the new chair that we took all the privileges away last term. <laughs> Council Member Debbie Rose. I just want um, to be very brief. I was not here to give my vote of confidence, so I want to say, I, on um, on the vote for Corey Johnson as Speaker, and um, I want to say thank you to Corey for um, entrusting me with the Youth Committee Chair. Um, I started my career in youth development, and I'm really excited to get back into that field. So thank you, um, Speaker Johnson, and I vote aye on his, uh, my, that's my vote for Speaker. Thank you. Thank you. We have three more speakers. Council Member Kalos. Affordable housing remains out of reach for New Yorkers. As the administration continues to announce progress preserving and building new housing, we will watch every deal closely to ensure New Yorkers are actually getting the affordable housing we need. The Independent Budget Office has questioned whether the city is overstating or worse, overpaying for affordable housing. I look forward to continuing to fight for affordable housing alongside our speaker, Corey Johnson, as chair of the Subcommittee on Planning Dispositions and Concessions by ensuring every hard-earned tax dollar is maximized to drive a hard bargain and generate significantly more affordable housing. I also plan to ensure the committee empowers communities in the planning process, that concessions throughout our city create opportunities for minority and women-owned small businesses, and I will make sure New Yorkers are getting a full return on any city land and any resources we are giving up. Thank you. And because I don't want his mother yelling at me, Councilmember <laughs> Keith Powers. <laughs> Thank you. No more, no more yelling. Uh, I want to say first congratulations to everybody on their, on their uh, new committees. Congratulations to our new majority leader and uh, to the new leadership as well. Thank you to Speaker Johnson. I know it's a difficult task, but um, someone that you took with a lot of caution and care to make sure that people were in places where they could do really good work for their communities and for the city of New York. I once again want to express my condolences to Councilmember Drum. Um, I know this has been a tough week for you, and uh, all your colleagues are here to, to join by your side. And last, um, to, my, to my colleague to the, to the left, I want to wish Councilmember Moya a belated birthday. He won't tell me how old he is. He just says old. But uh, he had a birthday this past week, and, uh, and I want to just wish him a belated birthday. Thank you. Councilmember Alika Samuels. Thank you, Madam Public Advocate. 
I just want to say thank you so much for just having the faith and um, just believing in me. And I look forward to chairing the Public Housing Committee. And I just really look forward to working with my colleagues because we know we have over half a million New Yorkers who are living in some very serious and disgusting conditions. And this is nothing new. And I know that my predecessor, Council Member Torres, has worked so hard on behalf of all of those families. And I look forward to continuing your fight and making sure that our residents, our families have and what they deserve. And so with that, I'm a product of public housing. Everyone knows I'm a voice for public housing. I used to work at public in the, at NYCHA. And um, we have a lot of work ahead of us. But I look forward to the challenge. And um, we're going to do what we have to do. So thank you. Councilmember Cumbo, did you have some additional remarks? Yes, public advocate. I too want to share my condolences to Councilmember Drum. I remember when I met you five years ago and I was contemplating running for office, you were managing the difficult task of meeting with potential candidates but also visiting your mom. And I remember how special it was that you took time out to meet with me. And so I certainly appreciate that. And I certainly appreciate your mom sharing you with us over these last four years. Um, I also want to add that uh, public advocate Letitia James, now that I have been elected as the majority leader, I am pleased to know that you are open to sharing your seat of power um, as I've seen today. And I also want to oh recognize. Boy. <laughs> oh boy. And I also want to ask the, the members of the Women's Caucus to remain behind up front so that we can take a group photo um, following today's meeting. Thank you. And now, closing remarks by the speaker, Speaker Johnson. Today's meeting is adjourned. So you go ahead Thank you very much. Stand adjourned. Say it. Stand adjourned. Go ahead. Say it. We're adjourned. We adjourned? Yes. We adjourned? Yeah. Oh, that's it. <laughs>